Click the Plan a New Flight button, whether you're on AOPA.org or anywhere you see it within iFlight Planner, to open the interactive flight planning interface. To close, click the X in the upper right hand corner and to navigate between the map, weather brief, flight plan filing, and documents views, click the corresponding tab or use the drop down menu if using a mobile browser. We'll start with the map providing you the ability to interactively plan routes with click and drag route rubber banding over high resolution aviation charts, Google Maps imagery, and numerous graphical map layers. You'll notice the planner console was displayed automatically when launching the interactive flight planning interface, and you can show or hide it, as well as the nav log once a flight has been planned, by clicking the appropriate button at the top center of the interface. The Planner Console is a powerful tool and we'll dive into its full capabilities in another tutorial, but want to make sure we provide enough context for you in this overview so you can do what you came here to do, and that's plan a flight. Starting in the top left, your stored routes are accessed by clicking the three stars. When you select a stored route, the saved airport pairs, route, alternate airport, aircraft, and altitude are automatically populated into the planner. Moving left to right, we have your departure airport, the routing type you'd like to fly, your destination, and alternate. Click the magnifying glass to search for and select qualifying alternate airports near your destination. The aircraft for this flight is chosen here, with your default aircraft being pre-populated unless you're using a stored route saved with a different aircraft, with the cruise speed and preferred altitude pulled from your aircraft profile. Feel free to change these as needed, but also check out the altitude comparison tool by clicking the calculator to find the fastest or most fuel efficient altitude for your route. Enter the known ramp fuel for the aircraft here, and if auto is activated, ramp fuel will be calculated based on the total fuel required to complete the flight with reserves as set here and total taxi fuel as set in the aircraft performance profile. To enter your own here, simply click Auto to unlock the data field. Set your departure for any date and time in the future by clicking here. You may also use any of the From Now options to have the time calculated automatically. You can run a no win plan by checking the box, and when you have the parameters for your flight set, click the green Plan Flight button to submit the flight information to the planning engine. And if this is a route you fly often, click the star and follow the steps to save this as a stored route for quick reference in a future planning session. Now that a flight has been planned, you can see the detailed navigation log has been populated here. Hiding the nav log and moving down to the map toolbar, you'll see a summary for your current flight on the left and the ability to refit the map to your full route as well as access the map layers menu on the right. This menu allows you to manage the radar and satellite, weather conditions, your My Airports and custom locations, fuel prices, airmets, sigmets, airspace class, and special use airspace, all as interactive map layers. You can also quickly clear the map as well as save the currently active map layers so the next time you open the planning interface, these layers will automatically be activated for you. Moving into the map itself, you'll see the timestamp for any active radar or satellite in the upper left corner, and in the upper right, the ability to change the base layer of your map from any of the FAA produced aeronautical charts, as well as basic map and satellite imagery. Individual waypoints are displayed as a letter or letters with a blue circular icon. A V represents any VOR base nav aid, an X is an intersection, C's are your custom locations, and the icon with the double L are latitude longitude coordinates. Click an icon to view the details for that waypoint with additional options to add or remove from the route, center the map, view airspace in the area, as well as view nearby fuel prices. We explore each of these features in detail in other tutorials, so keep an eye out for those on our respective YouTube channels. When you have a route such as this one, with a series of blue waypoint markers that you would like to modify by route rubber banding, simply click, hold, and drag any existing V, X, 
C or LL waypoint to move that waypoint. If you would like to adjust a segment, you must first insert a waypoint by clicking on the route line. If you are planning on a computer, more specifically not on a mobile device, hovering your mouse over a segment will change its color, in this case magenta. When colored, click on the route line to insert a new waypoint, then click and drag it to your desired location. Otherwise, if you click, hold, and attempt to drag a route line, you will simply pan the map. Now once you drag and drop that waypoint, a version of our location menu appears, allowing you to snap that waypoint to a nearby facility, nav aid, or custom location. Or, if you would like to leave the waypoint in its new location without snapping it to a known identifier, click Lat Long Waypoint from the All tab and it will stay put. iFlight Planner will recognize that a modification to your route has been made and notify you through the orange flag that appears from the left. Click that flag to replan the route and generate a new navigation log. We know there is a ton here and we encourage you to follow the user guide for a deep dive into every feature as well as follow the YouTube channels as more tutorials based on your feedback are added. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you for the next tutorial covering the certified weather brief.